So today, the topic is how to get control of your mind while going on a first date or talking to a first match. So there's very little that can make a day go from good to bad. Good meaning you can get like a second date and bad meaning there's no possibility of a second date. So your mind is really in control. You don't have to read from my book. And um, yeah, so there are like two ways to actually make sure you have a good date as opposed to a bad date. And number one is just be aware. And the second one is stay in the present. So I'm going to just talk about each of them in little detail. Your mind kind of determines if you have a good date or a bad date. So um, we've all had past date experiences, we've all gone on dates, and it's in our memories. It's stored there, obviously. So imagine um, a guy that had a bad first date where the lady ended up insulting him in public and for like something minor. So he has that memory in his head. And then imagine a girl, because I saw this story online recently, that a girl went on a date with a guy and he stole her phone. Like he said, I need to make a call. And then he went and never came back. And then a lot of people commented that it happened to them too. So imagine this scenario where that girl that's had that bad experience, you know, it's in her memory, and then she has to go for another first date. So she goes for this new first date, and it's going great, everyone is having fun, and all of a sudden the guy asks, and he tells her like, can I make a call with you for my, my battery's dead? Immediately it's going to, you know, bring back those memories from the bad date she had previously. And obviously, it might make your tummy turn, make your chest get tight. It might make you just have a bad feeling. And your response could either be, well, because you're not even expecting to be asked that question. So your response could be, well, I don't let strangers use my phone, or my battery's low as well, or why don't we go somewhere and find your charger? Or you could even say, well, I had a bad experience on a date that had to do with me giving the guy my charger. Whatever your response is, it could get things to an awkward place. Even if your response is the last one, the truth statement that you had a bad experience on a day because a guy took your phone and never came back, it might make him feel like, uh, do I look like a thief? Or, you know, like, it's just, it just might make someone feel weird. You know, even as a lady, imagine someone said, well, the last time I let a girl take my phone, um, you know, she did this. You would really feel like insulted. Dates could get awkward from that. You know, because as the guy, you feel weird that she compared you to a thief. And as a girl, you would feel weird if he compared you to a thief as well. So the fun you were once having the date could end, you know, at that point. So imagine someone that's like above 35, you've had more experience in dating. So you've had a lot more bad dates, possibly. So it, let's say you've had like 10 bad dates. One of them, your phone was stolen. And it's for like ladies, some of them, your phone was stolen. Or for a guy, she came with like a million friends or for a lady or for anybody you just had like 10 different bad dates maybe the person you ended up dating the person and the person after a month you know was like really crude or on the date they were rude for whatever reason but you have 10 you have at least 10 bad experiences with dating or relationship if you've had 10 bad date experience this increases the likelihood of you having you know one of those memories brought up in another first date so now if you have this high likelihood of that happening, you know, it has to be something you can control. Otherwise, you just go on every date being mad. Because you could go on a date with someone and something as minor as his name, like if you dated someone called Tayo for maybe a month and it ended really badly and you met the guy and he was like, oh, well, nice to meet you. Or even a match speaking to you on the phone and says, nice to meet, nice to meet you, I'm Tayo. It could go, you know, you could be like, oh, cool, I've heard that name before. Or it could you know, bring up like feelings that are negative and already on the defensive. So you might talk to them in a certain way or you might react in a certain way. So something as minor as even the smell. Have you ever met someone and they had this smell like it was a, the same perfume as someone else that you really had good feelings for and it could bring up all these memories or someone that you had really bad feelings about or experiences with and it could bring back all these bad memories. So if smell can do that and names, things as minor as that so it's already like so many things that can bring up this bad you know this bad vibe that might spoil your date already you know without you even going on the date so how do you do this right so the two points on how to get 
control of your mind before a date or talking to a match. As I said, is be aware and stay in the presence. The first point is be aware. So being aware is just reminding yourself that this is a whole new person and has nothing to do with anyone in your past. And even though that's hard, it's just, you know, even in the mannerisms and the way people sound. I've actually spoken to someone, they sounded exactly like someone I had a bad experience with. I just kept saying, no, I need to see you to talk to you because I keep thinking I'm talking to the same person. So I need to see you to talk to you. So people just sound alike, they have the same mannerisms, even the way they sneeze and all that. So you need to be open-minded and realize that your well, life is full of risks. So, um, you know, if it works out good, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't kill you. You just move on with the new life experience. So if you don't, um, if you're aware of everything and realize that this is a whole new experience, you may move on, you know, to that date with a different perspective and not trying to dwell on the past. This happened to me recently as well. You know, it was interesting, the back and forth. It was like playing tennis, like you hit the ball in my court, I hit it back. The conversation was going really well. And then when I made a connection, I was like, oh my God, such a small world. And I didn't move on from that. You know, it became a very slow game of tennis. So he would say something and I would kind of answer with a yes or no, or just be like, you know, and it's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Because I had suddenly just gone in my head. So I completely shut down, you know, and that's why I actually was like, okay, I need to figure out what you do in these situations. And you know, when I give this post and advice, it's because I'm going through the same thing. So I know that other people are probably going through the same thing. And so, you know, trying to figure out this dating world and kind of seeing how, you know, knowing how to learn from your mistakes. Next time you're going out there on a first date or talking to a first match, be aware and make sure you don't judge your first match by, you know, past relationships or past experiences, you know, because it's the whole looking for red flags. Don't just dwell on it. Try and enjoy it as a new experience. And also try and stay in the present. It's very easy for our minds to wander off into our past relationships, our past experiences that were not good, and it could affect your date. And it could stop you from meeting someone wonderful just because you know it's in your head. So that's why you have to get control of your mind. So it could be for a million things, obviously. Like you could meet a guy called Tayo and you had a bad experience with the Tayo and that's it. You could um, meet an evil guy, you had a bad experience with an evil guy, and that's it. You could have dated a guy that went to Unilag, you meet another guy that went to Unilag, and that's it. You know, in all these situations, you could just put your defenses up just because of your bad experience. So imagine all the experiences you had. So if all of those things stop you from meeting someone, it would be impossible for you to meet someone that you didn't have a problem with. So that's why you have to kind of get control of your mind when talking to a new date or a new match. And I hope this helps someone and if you have any questions, please put it in the comment section and I will do my research and post on it.